fortunate to be here with Rabbi Dr. Alan Brill, who uh, teaches Jewish thought at Seton Hall and is a very prolific writer and blogger on uh, many eclectic issues. Uh, so it's an honor to have this time to talk Thank to you. Thank you. It's glad to be here. So um, one of your recent interests that you've been writing on has been on Rav Shigar. For those who aren't familiar with Rav Shigar, he, you know, had his parents were um, uh, survivors. Well, let me can fill that yeah. in. Yeah. He was a uh, parents of Hanukkah Holocaust survivors, yeah. trained the normal Israeli yeshiva system. Yeah. He was in a tank during the uh, war in Israel, yeah. back when he was a youth. Yeah. His two buddies got killed, and he survived. And since that point, he realized things can't go back to a simple optimism. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he developed, starting in the 80s, that we've got to look for new answers, deeper answers, mm-hmm. and move beyond the rather older ideologies right. within yeah. religious Zionism. And he's, he's leading Siach Yitzchak, the yeshiva in Efrat, and he's considered a postmodernist. Well, so he, he's both he yeshiva pe- guy and a Well, thinker. he passed away a decade ago. Yeah, he passed away 11 years ago. Years ago. Yeah. He founded this yeshiva in yeah. um, 1997 yeah. with his longtime study partner, Rav Yair Dreyfus. Mm-hmm. So, um, I know you're currently translating uh, yeah. uh, one of his works. Can you share a little bit about sure. that? Sure. The translating a collection of his essays on the holidays, on prayer, on education, on, on post-Zionism, as a introduction for people yeah. to know about his thought in a way that could be brought into the synagogue. When is that coming out? Next year at this time, okay. we hope to be Next out. Year. Okay. So, many look to religion for answers. Right. Um, what would Rav Shigar's answer be to someone? An Israeli comes up to him and says, "Look, I'm searching. I'm searching for for truth. I'm searching for answers. You know, you know, is is Judaism an enterprise worth engaging in? What, what would his response be to that?" Well, those are two separate questions. Yeah, yeah. The first one, yeah. searching for truth. Yeah. He would say, "We now live in an era of faith, not truth. Uh-huh. We live in an age where there's no evidence. Right. There's no proof anymore. Yeah. And either you have faith or you don't." Right. Right. Um, and therefore either come for the ride or you don't come for the ride. Yeah. But that's separate from the thing is, if you're coming from the ride, yeah. then do you throw in your lot with studying yeshiva or with Torah? Do you take it upon yourself yeah. or don't you? And once you do, you realize it's non-foundational. Uh-huh. So someone who says, um, I struggle with the Torah being capital T true, yeah. he would say that's not really a problem. That's not really a problem, right. Um, so, so, uh, how does he get into postmodern thought? Like what, what's the problem that he's wrestling with that pushes him to that area? So it's not exactly, it's just the change. The fact is, is he started in the 1980s saying that all the answers, whether the analytic approaches to Talmud or academic approaches to Talmud or the Zionist thought were all fixed ideologies, but they all seemed limited. Mm -hmm. How do we go beyond how do we now incorporate the complexity of life, the complexity of politics, mm-hmm. the complexity of even our souls? Yeah. And he, he would uh, start teaching Rav Nachman and poetry and philosophy, and he was already saying, I'm post-whatever you were. It wasn't right. really post-modernism. Yeah. But when the postmodern era came in, that kind of clung, mm-hmm. because he only read his first postmodern book in 1997, mm-hmm. a decade before he died. Mm-hmm. But he wanted to go beyond. But the message he captured is we now live in an age of globalization, Mm -hmm. neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. We live in an age of new age. We live in an age of people take trips to India. All sorts of new combinations with Judaism. And he basically said, when I read Rav Cook's 19th century definition of nationalism, And what does it mean to be a Jew in the land? It doesn't go along with all of that. Mm -hmm. And if I can even say what the value is for American Jewry, that becomes the sense as he says, okay, we've got to go forward. So there's even an American canon, whether no matter what denomination you belong to, we're still very caught up with the German thought of the beginning of the 20th century, whether it's Buber or Heschel or Soloveitchik, it's heavenly, heaven, hev- heavily uh, from 100 years ago. Right. Nobody's doing anything to move beyond it. Yeah. And it's not that he's a theologian. He's not really writing the, the system. He didn't write the systematic book to move you along. Right. He just right. said, we've got to move along. So how is, so for, those, for American Jews, American religious Jews who stopped at Soloveitchik and Heschel, 
Uh, yeah. Like, how, do, how is Rav Shugar helpful for them? Because you see him doing holiday sermons, uh-huh. bringing in Derrida uh-huh. and Lacan right. and Foucault, but he'll also bring in The Matrix mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all sorts of other movies. Yeah. And contemporary novels, mm-hmm. I mean, in twenty first century right, material, right. and saying we grapple with it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, and so, the broken vessels are a form of deconstructionism, in a sense. Or not in the tech, not in the American. Real reconstruction is a very technical thing. Yeah. Broken vessels, I mean, whatever we came into with the eighties, those yeah. modernists right, right. don't speak to us anymore. Right, 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 right. And we've got to look yeah. to new to new visions. Right. To get our answers. Yes. So, so um, how would you answer the question of where we're headed? Meaning, of course, we have the Jewish theology of Yerida and Dorot that we're declining. But there's also lots of Jewish theology <coughs> of, of progress, either Messianism, that we're moving towards a mm-hmm. Messianic era, certainly intertwined Zionism, um, or, you know, uh, forms of progressive activism that we're working mm-hmm. towards a tikkun olam or, or the sort. But, you know, it, it, so, so how, how would he answer... Um, the, the, I mean, typically, postmodernists reject progress right. um, uh, that's shattered with the Shoah. Right. But, but so, so how would he answer the question, if not progress, then where are we headed ultimately? The answer is we, don't, we wind up where we're supposed to be. Uh-huh. To give yeah. you several t- theme and variations, moving right. individual to bigger question mm-hmm. to nationalism. Mm-hmm. On the individual level, he says, if you do repentance, where are you going? So for an American Jew, even forgetting Heschel and Salvation, even for Buber, yeah. repentance brings you back to God. Mm-hmm. But he asks in our, our age of postmodernism in the 21st century, right. globalization, where we can, we're turning to. Yeah. I don't know where we're returning right. to. Right. We all have to then go yeah. out and seek our paths. And then he would say, ultimately, repentance is the self-acceptance uh-huh. of understanding God. Whatever you're doing is what God wanted. Right. And in later language, he would use this... Um, phrase from the psychoanalyst Lacan mm-hmm. says that the letter always reaches its destination. Mm-hmm. Meaning wherever it winds up was yeah. where it had to be. Right, right. Okay. So, yeah. So then I'll give you three variables. Yeah, yeah. So that's the individual level. Okay. Okay. On the um, national level, he would say that, he would say that the era of nationalism, of Rav Cook, of state building, of machismo, of army, those things of, was a era, an earlier era. But our era is now going to be a very something that we're still trying to figure out what it is. We don't speak 19th century nationalism mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. So therefore, we're going to look at personal redemption, spiritual redemption mm-hmm. in the country, ethical redemption, yeah. the integration of human rights. Right the integration of working together with our Palestinian right. brothers. And he's going to, it's not progress, but it's going to be a new vision. Mm-hmm. But he's going to go so far and say the Rav Cook vision was this concept of the Messiah of Joseph, meaning mm-hmm. the early stages. And his vision is now the fulfillment of it, the Messiah of David. Mm-hmm. But then he'll recoil mm-hmm. and really you know, say we really don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then, so what is the religious person journeying towards? Toward? Yeah. Toward the, the self-acceptance of the fullness of life. Uh-huh. Self-acceptance of the fullness of life. Right. right. There's, a, there's a quest here for mm-hmm. fullness. Right. And that's why he'll even change the way Torah is studied. Mm-hmm. It's not programmatic in the normal Beit Midrash. Right. And this is his bigger infl- biggest influence. Yeah. Yeah. He would now bring philosophy right. and poetry into yeah. the study hall. Right. He would bring in Agadah. He would bring in... Um, yoga, he would bring, for example, in his yeshiva, yeah, right. they're now studying as part of the yeshiva curriculum a Jewish understanding yeah. of the yoga sutras. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No yeshiva on earth is going right. to do that, but it's a look for a new conceptualization of yeah. where we're going. Yeah. But at the same time, he'll also have, a, there'll also be classes on more on Jewish thought and right. Hasidut. So the, so, the, so the fullness of life, you would think, would require some kind of halachic innovation. But he's a traditionalist. He's a traditionalist. Meaning, how could he be so radically open? Meaning, how does he root his um, lack of desire for halachic innovation, essentially, uh, if, if all of this fullness has to kind of come into the conversation? But if it has no poignancy to kind of move us forward. Because he's, he's moving the conversation to these other questions. And that's why 
already from the 1980s, he made Rav Nachman his focus. But Rav Nachman not as, you know, na-na Nachman or enthusiasm. Yeah. But let's use passage to talk about what is the role of prophecy. What is the role of silence? Yeah. What is the role of poetry? Yeah. What is the role of, of confessing what you've been doing? Yeah. He's looking for an expanded religious language, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not legal language. Mm-hmm. He's going to say that, that when it comes to the legal question, he's going to throw it back on you and he, giving the example of everyone who came from Europe whose parents were traditionalists. Yeah. And for many decades, the yeshivot retrained the children to be halachic mm-hmm. and to go against the traditions of the old country mm-hmm. because now the textual traditions, the halachic traditions, no more. And whatever your grandparents did is put on a burner, yeah. back burner. Yeah. He said now that people want to go away from that, you actually are going back to the true wisdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It actually is the wisdom of being light and cool mm-hmm. and not getting hung up on the legalism of it. Yeah. So, so I think my last uh, question then is uh, on the tension between moral relativism and being a moral agent. Yeah. How does he navigate this sense that we have a, you know, whether it's a Zionist project or a universalistic project, yeah. that we have a responsibility to be engaged in society on a moral level? So I'm going to def- take it to where the way he goes with yeah. it because he doesn't yeah. use that language. Yeah. Agency is a very you know, modernist category. Right, right. He uses the Nachman categories. Yeah. So he'll talk about... For example, he's got a lot criticizing capitalism uh-huh. and neoliberalism. Yeah. Because he'll say that Rav Nachman thinks that the accumulation of wealth mm-hmm. is egoism. Mm-hmm. It's greed. It'll corrupt you from the core. Mm-hmm. If you are greed and you live your life to make money, yeah. you can't pray, as Rav Nachman yeah. said. So it's the master of prayer versus the master of greed. Yeah. And then he'll look at it on the yeah. society yeah. as a whole and say we need more prayer and poetry and silence mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and less of the accumulation of wealth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Less, less concerned about the question of moral agency. Right, right. Okay. Very interesting. So if folks want to read more, learn, learn more about Shigar Torah, what do you recommend for them? I have most of my translations mm-hmm. already up on my website. How you many can, are up there? Uh, there's 19 pages. Yeah. I don't right. know how many actual okay. trans... Okay. 19 pages up of... Uh, of Shagar's yeah. thought that I've, that's been translated between Levi Mora mm-hmm. in Israel doing the translations. Yeah. They're up online. Yeah. You can read those and gain some insight. Very good. Thank you very much.